All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine, the home for all things horror. This is going to be the very first episode in a series called Gems of Horror. From mainstream horror classics to lesser known hidden gems, I'll be breaking down and discussing, in my opinion, the very best films that the horror movie genre has to offer. In our first episode, I want to talk about a film that inspired me to do this in the first place. A film that, a week prior to the making of this video, I had never even heard of. That film, ladies and gentlemen, is Shrew's Nest. I'll be summarizing the events of the film while giving my thoughts, criticisms, and why I believe that this movie is a true hidden gem of the horror movie genre. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this video, feel free to subscribe and join a community of fellow horror fans around the world. You guys might want to hold on to your seats for this one because it's an absolute wild ride. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Shrew's Nest begins with the introduction of our two main characters, Monsi and her younger sister, who I never actually noticed prior to making this video, is never actually named. We'll just call her Little Sis. The beginning of the film establishes that their mother died while giving birth to Little Sis and that their father disappeared sometime after, leaving Monsi with the responsibility and heavy burden of raising her all on her own. We see that Little Sis is envious of Monsi since she has pictures with their mother, something that Monsi kind of just shrugs off with a faint and kind of awkward smile. We quickly realize that Monsi has not stepped foot out of the apartment in quite some time as she suffers from agoraphobia and is absolutely terrified of the outside world. She is deeply religious and seems to be very protective of Little Sis, whom she does not consider to be a grown woman, even at the age of 18. Monsi runs a small business out of the apartment as a dressmaker, where one of her clients and apparent drug dealer, Danya Puri, provides her with an unknown liquid drug that possibly helps Monsi with panic attacks. The film does an amazing job of establishing the character of Monsi, a sibling troubled with trying to balance the role of being a parent for her younger sister, all the while struggling with her own personal demons and tragic past, which ultimately ends up affecting the relationship in a horrific way. Monsi's overprotection of Little Sis swiftly explodes into a physical altercation between the two that begins the downfall of their relationship. This is also where we begin to understand the extent of Monsi's fear of the outside world. You can't help but to feel sad for both parties involved. On one hand, you can somewhat understand why Monsi is being so protective of a younger sibling. However, she is clearly justifying her treatment of Little Sis based off of her own opinions and past experiences. While the world we live in is definitely a dangerous place, Monty refuses to acknowledge that Little Sis is a grown woman that can make decisions and experience the world on her own. In the aftermath of the sisterly clash, we are introduced to our next character and the driving force of the movie's drastic shift of pace, Carlos. Carlos is a sister's upstairs neighbor who seems to be trying to escape his own demons. Just when you thought that Monty's character couldn't get any more complex, we see that she is haunted by hallucinations of her missing father. From the perspective of her hallucinations, we see that her father may not have been exactly father of the year, even when he was present. Monty and Carlos eventually meet when he knocks on her apartment door to let her know that he has just fallen down the stairs and needs her help. Confused and terrified, Monty initially shuts the door on the unconscious Carlos. However, her faith pushes her to help the injured man and she brings him into her home. Monsi is now forced to render aid to one of the things that she fears most about the outside world, men. This is a pivotal moment in the film as we observe both the internal and external conflict Monsi faces by having brought Carlos into her home. Despite her best and valiant efforts to hide Carlos from her sister, little sis eventually finds him. In this moment, the rift between the sisters is obvious, and the trust shattered, as Little Sis believes it was in fact Monsi who may have hurt Carlos and kidnapped him. Monsi only reinforces her thoughts when she threatens to kick her out of the apartment if she tells anyone about Carlos's whereabouts. Little Sis befriends Carlos behind Monsi's back, and the two form a somewhat secret relationship in which Little Sis warns Carlos not to trust Monsi. During these secret love meetings, we realize that Carlos is in fact hiding from unknown individuals and that he finds his current position a blessing in disguise. However, he does not realize the full extent of his injuries and that Monsi never actually called a doctor like she claimed. Monsi then starts giving Carlos small doses of the drug she was given by Doña Puri to help him with his pain. We slowly start to see a change in Monsi's personality as she begins to develop feelings for Carlos. 
She begins to cherish the very thing she once feared, who came in from the outside world and penetrated her safe haven. He shows her what she believed no man capable, warmth and kindness. She describes Carlos the little sis as a tiny bit of real life and states he makes her feel like a normal woman. This is one of the most beautiful moments in the film. As we watch Monsi describe her feelings for Carlos the little sis, you begin to realize just how self-aware she is of her condition. Thanks to Macarena Gomez's brilliant performance, you can truly see her desire for a normal life simply by looking into her eyes. Little Sis and Carlos begin to establish that Monse has been untruthful about his treatment and keeping him in the apartment. We find out that the drug she was given by Dona Purdy is morphine and she has been slipping it into his water to help ease the pain. Now, while we don't know the exact amount of time Carlos has been kept hidden away by Monse, I think it's safe to say that it's probably been a little too long, especially since he's never once received actual medical care. However, we do know that he's been kept hidden long enough to be considered a missing person and that the police, as well as possible family members, are now looking for him. Monse decides it's finally time to confess her feelings to Carlos. She tells him that he makes her feel safe and that no man has treated her the way he does with respect and warmth. Carlos responds by confronting Monsi about her lies and the dire status of his condition. He even proceeds to insult Monsi, calling her a liar that doesn't know how to love. He tells Monsi that she needs to start by telling the truth, and only then will someone may be able to love her one day. While inside of Carlos' apartment, Little Sis meets a woman named Elise, and we finally figure out what Carlos is running away from, the terrifying prospect of marriage. Elise tells Little Sis that she and Carlos were supposed to be married the day he went missing, and in turn, Little Sis tells her that Carlos has been hiding in her apartment the entire time. Ouch. Elise goes down to the apartment to confront Monsi and find Carlos. Monsi is taken aback when she finds out that Elise is Carlos's wife. She pleads with Elise not to take Carlos away. We can tell just by the look on her face how afraid she is at the thought of losing Carlos. This is where all hell breaks loose and the film takes a dark, dark turn. Monse proceeds to murder Elise in cold blood right in front of Carlos who begins to shout murderer at Monse at the top of his lungs. In an attempt to keep the love of her life quiet, she grabs his head and bashes it in multiple times on the wooden edge of the bed and knocks him out cold. Monse realizes what she's just done and enters full panic mode. She begins to dismember Elise's body in an attempt to cover up the horrible and sudden crime of passion. Carlos suddenly wakes up and decides it's finally time to make a run for it. In this truly brilliant and horrifying scene, Carlos is forced to crawl and drag himself through a pool of the blood of his dead wife in order to avoid the same fate. With Monty distracted, he manages to get all the way to the door, opens it, and finally escapes. Just kidding. His escape plan is foiled thanks to the highly inconvenient top lock on the door that manages to catch Monsi's attention. And just like that, Carlos is once again trapped. It's now nighttime, and we see that while all the horrific events were taking place downstairs, Little Sis was in Carlos' apartment the entire time, conveniently giving Monsi enough time to clean up the crime scene and get rid of all the evidence. She finally makes her way back downstairs, where everything appears to be in order. Monsi decides to listen to Carlos's advice and finally tells Little Sis the truth about their father's disappearance. In an absolutely tragic recounting of events, Monsi reveals that their father went mad after their mother's death. Monsi states that, in his madness, his love for his daughter blended with his love for his wife and tells Little Sis that she was raped by him every night for years. Monsi tells Little Sis that she would read the Bible to her every night in hopes that she would fall asleep fast enough that she wouldn't have to hear the horrors happening in the next room. She then confesses to killing their monstrous father by poisoning his meal with some good old fashioned rat poison. Little Sis's reaction to Monsi's secret and her actions that follow are one of my biggest problems with the film. While I understand that Little Sis has been lied to her entire life and that Monsi is absolutely nuts, her reaction to Monsi's tragic secret only make matters worse and I feel finally shatters any connection that was left between the two sisters. Instead of offering condolences or any sort of sympathy for what Monsi went through and did to protect her, she shuns Monsi and only sees her as a monster. Little Sis goes over to Carlos where he reveals to her that Monsi murdered Elise and unknowingly their unborn child. It is then revealed that Monsi has sewn Carlos's injured leg onto the bedsheets. It completely horrified Carlos as reassured by Little Sis that Monsi will not defeat them. 
by the determined look on her face, we can see that she has a plan that apparently has to wait all the way until the next morning and has nothing to do with simply going to the police. The next day, Monty gets a visit from Danya Puri and her niece as she promised to make a wedding dress for her free of charge. It doesn't take long for things to go south as Carlos begins screaming for help from the other room. Monty quickly shuts him up by absolutely wailing on him. Danya Puri and her niece then discovered the dismembered body of Elise, which was hidden by being turned into a mannequin holding up a dress. Terrified, Danya Purdy pleads with Monty not to hurt them as she is her supply for morphine. Monty replies that God will provide and proceeds to murder her number one customer. Little Sis returns home and really had me questioning her decision making. Instead of going to the police for help, she decides to confront Monty and proceeds to lure her into the bedroom. She uses a wooden cross to knock Monty across the face and locks her in the bedroom. She discovers the mutilated bodies of Elise, Donya Purdy, and her niece in the sewing room. She then rushes to Carlos and the pair attempt to make a run for it. Carlos then goes completely limp and becomes absolutely useless in their escape attempt. Now completely enraged and fueled by one last hallucination of her father, Monty breaks down the door and proceeds to put the beat down on both Carlos and little sis. An absolutely raw and gritty fight ensues between the once inseparable sisters that had me on the absolute edge of my seat. The fight ends when little sis manages to stab Monty multiple times with a kitchen knife. With the remaining strength she has left, the bloodied Monty pleads with her sister not to kill her. They both break into tears as they both realize just how broken their relationship has become. In her dying breath, Monty confesses to little sis that their father managed to take a picture of her with Mama the day she was born. Monty reveals that she hid the picture in the same place she hid their father's dead body. Little Sis discovers a crawl space which was hidden behind a small altar dedicated to their late mother. She finds the picture which reveals the final twist of the film. It is in fact a picture of Monty holding Little Sis in her arms as a baby, revealing that she was actually her mother and gave birth to Little Sis as a result of her father's monstrous deeds. At this point, most of Monty's past actions and behavior began to make a lot more sense. Monty initially appeared to be an overprotective sister, but was actually a mother who could not bear the thought of anything happening to her child, which is completely understandable. In this moment, the film doesn't ask us to excuse or even forgive Monty's actions. However, this revelation shines a whole new light on why she behaved the way she did, and I couldn't help but to feel extremely sad for her. In a truly tragic yet beautiful scene, Little Sis returns to Monsi and embraces her dying mother in her arms one last time. With the over-reliance of her back as opposed to utilizing her legs, Little Sis then carries Carlos out of the apartment and he realizes that he still doesn't know her name after all this time. She whispers into his ear, Little Sis. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. The two share a kiss and Little Sis leaves Carlos out in the hallway as she makes her way back to the apartment and shuts the door. Wow. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Shrew's Nest. Released all the way back in 2014, I had never actually heard of this film until coming across the movie last week on Shudder. The film was an absolute roller coaster of a movie. Despite for a few character choices made throughout the film in order to further the plot, I felt that the movie had an extremely engaging narrative. The character of Monty was masterfully acted and brought to life by actress Macarena Gomez, whom I believe carried the entire movie. I feel like the character of Little Sis was completely outshined by Monsi, to no fault of the actress that portrays Little Sis, Nadia de Santiago. I truly feel that this entire film revolved around Monsi's story. Monsi started out as an overly protective and seemingly insane sister. By the end of the film, we realized that she was just a mother who was attempting to protect her own child, the only thing she held dear in this world. In the end, she failed to do that, to no fault of her own, but due to being unable to cope with the demons of her past. I believe that holding on to her secret for so long is what caused her downfall. Had she been honest with her daughter from the start, there is a chance that Monsey's tragic story might have had a happy ending. Shrew's Nest is a character-driven film that offers a fairly simple plot similar to that of Misery. However, the film is full of tense moments and offers a truly beautiful narrative that leads to a surprisingly bloody and gut-wrenching climax. Although not a perfect film, I truly believe Shrew's Nest is a hidden gem among horror movies and I would highly recommend it to fans of the genre. Ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you all enjoy this video and I can't wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.